What's going on guys? I want to talk to you today about something that's going to be a little bit controversial, but as you know, if you spend any time on this channel, we don't always shy away from that. And talking about those things can be important. And I know it's kind of weird to think that that can be important when it comes to style and clothing and appearance. But I think as we dive a little bit more into today's video, you're going to understand why I'm actually talking about this. Now, before we go any further, I want to tell you that as far as the ramifications, whether or not this did or did happen the way that the news is presenting it, what motives were, whether or not Pulliam is guilty of something that he's been accused of, I, I don't know. I really hope that justice will end up prevailing and I trust our court system to be able to help us out with that. And so you guys are welcome to make comments as far as the actual legality of the case or what it entails. I'm not really gonna be engaging with you guys on that stuff because what I'm more interested in is how the news uses clothing to further their narrative. So what do I mean by that? Well, yesterday as I was at the gym on one of the screens, this video came on. The 62-year-old West Virginia man accused of shooting and killing an African-American teenager should not have had a gun at all. William Pulliam shot 15-year-old James Means after a verbal confrontation Monday night. He is now accused of first-degree murder. CNN's Ryan Young has more. So, Ryan, the suspect, suspect gave a jailhouse interview. What did he say? Well, he did give a jailhouse interview, and this is one of those stories you've got to keep looking at and try to unravel it because there's so many different details about this one, Pamela. Uh, the suspect says that he was walking to a Dollar General when he bumped into three teens and that they exchanged some sort of words. He then says in this jailhouse interview that the 15-year-old James Meade produced a gun and was waving it around. He said he wanted to get away from that young man. He went to the dollar store, and on returning from that dollar store, he actually crossed the street to avoid this young man. He says then James Meade crossed the street. They had more words. And that's when he pulled his gun. Listen to some of the words he said during that jailhouse interview. I felt my life was in danger. I'm sorry, but I mean, I'm 62 years old. I'm not going to take a bunch of punks beating me up. I don't care if they're white or black. Nobody's going to do me like that. It doesn't make any difference. He's black. My God, everybody I live around over is black. I get along with all of them. I ask them. And so that's the conversation here at this point, trying to figure out exactly what happened. Police say in their complaint that... Uh, William Pulliam said to them he took another piece of trash off the street. That's actually in their criminal complaint. Now he's saying he did not say that. We've obviously reached out to the police department to get their side of the story. One of the things we also want to talk to them about is whether or not this 15-year-old was possessing a gun at the time when this confrontation happened. That's also not a part of the initial police report. But one of the things that people are talking about, obviously, is what happened to put these two men together where he pulled out a gun and then, according to police, went home ate dinner before police arrived to arrest him. So a lot of troubling details here in yeah, this one, Pamela. That's disturbing. And the suspect wasn't even supposed to have a gun in the first place. Is that right? Absolutely right. Back in 2013, he uh, pleaded no contest to a domestic uh, abuse charges. And by federal law, he was not supposed to have a gun. So obviously, he was walking around with that revolver at the time when he had this confrontation with the teen. Uh, he would face charges for that as well. So, of course, there's a lot to unravel here because if that teen had a gun, obviously this changes parts of the story and whether or not who was the aggressor and who was involved in this. Now, again, I don't know very much as far as details about the case. I didn't spend a whole lot of time researching it because, honestly, the video, again, is not about the case itself. What I want to talk about is what you saw Pulliam, the man who was accused of shooting, wearing, and what you saw means the boy who was shot, what he was wearing, and why they chose to use the, the photos and the pictures that they did. So if you think about it, means 15-year-old boy shows a lot of promise, at least according to what the news is saying. What they end up using are these photos that look like they're from some sort of, I don't know, a middle school graduation or some sort of other school photo. He's in a white shirt, he's got a tie on, and they just make him look like he's a well-to-do boy. If you dive in a little bit deeper on the internet, then you can find other photos of him wearing things like the wife beaters and looking a little bit more like a quote-unquote thug. And again, I'm not saying that this kid deserves to die. I, I don't know if he was attacking Pulliam. I have no idea. But again, what I do know is that the narrative of the news of the innocent young black boy who shows promise versus the racist predator white man who was basically just out to kill him because he was black. And that's the narrative that's being pushed. Whether or not that's true, I don't know. And so the way that CNN furthers that narrative is by showing photos of means in clothing that we traditionally associate with aspirational, well-to-do, respectable, and refined. 
And again, that's so saturated culture wide that you subconsciously see a white shirt and tie and you, th you think those things, you can't do anything about that. Now, on the other hand, we see Pulliam and the only thing that we get from him is his mugshot and then him in his orange prison jumper, which again, we see so often that immediately what your brain does and connects it with is criminal. Now, is that absolutely the case? Again, I don't know. If it is, then the media has just furthered their narrative and they've furthered the truth. If it's not the case, then what the media has done is furthered their narrative and they've perpetuated a lie in order to fit the narrative. Either way, they're telling you a story. They are giving you a narrative. They are not just reporting on the facts by choosing to use the photos and the video clips that they did. Because for most people, the sympathies, the understandings, the beliefs would be very, very different if they showed photos of Means dressing more like a thug and they showed Polium in photos of him with his family wearing a suit and tie looking like a respectable member of society. I don't know anything about this guy. I don't know anything about this kid. All I know is what the media is telling me through this story, but then I also know that an organization, especially like CNN, just got raised during the election, and they are trying to find their great white defendant to perpetuate the narrative that because of Trump's victory, all of a sudden racism is on the rise, and we're going to see more and more attacks like that. Is that the case? And so... Just pay attention to that stuff when you watch the news. As I was on the treadmill getting in some cardio, watching this yesterday, it was hard for me to not take a cynical approach and really wonder what it is that actually went down. I wasn't even listening to it. All I was able to do was see the headlines and see the interviews and see the photos. And so all I saw was a respectable black boy, criminal white man who killed the respectable black boy because it's a hate crime and because he hates black people. So think about that whenever it is that you're actually being told a story, whether that's through the media or through something else, think about what it is that they're actually trying to elicit from you emotionally and psychologically based on the little subtle details of even the clothing that the characters in the story are wearing because it does completely change what it is that you're perceiving and even what it is that they're telling. I would love to hear what you guys think about something like this. Can you think of other cases like this where you've seen this happen before and even where, okay, legal cases where you've got criminal defense attorneys who have their defendants dress up in certain ways. I can think of one like George Zimmerman. When he showed up for trial, he was in a suit that was way too big and so it made him look smaller, scrawnier, more defenseless, and it was supposed to elicit more sympathy from the jury and from the other people in the courtroom. So tell me what you think if you've seen other situations like this. And again, I don't necessarily need to know what you think as far as whether or not the narrative of this particular story is true. That's not the purpose of this video, but it is to help you understand that the media, especially these big invested in your dollars and in your eyeballs and in your watching them versus anybody else, these big news organizations are going to push whatever narrative they think is going to sell best and they will do it using any means they can, including the clothing and the photos they choose to use on the different parties who are involved in an altercation. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave me a thumbs up. Definitely leave me a comment below. If you are not subscribed, subscribe and I will catch you on the next one.